Hey everyone, it's Brittany and I am back today to make some really cool items featuring um, some new products from Jesse James Beads. Um, first, I'm going to show you the strand duo called Beachside Babe. And the first strand is called Beach Tan and it's all glass and I am obsessed with this bead right here. And I'm going to be using that in um, a design today. And it's just full of really pretty crystals. Mm, I love crystals and they're a really nice like um, gold tan hue. Super pretty with some nice spacers and bead caps in there. And then we have the um, walk on the beach designer strand including this beautiful set of boho beads here and then there are some stone beads and I, I think that might be some kind of agate and then we have some crystals and I think think this is ceramic um, and then we have some really cool bead caps on there so we're gonna make some items I'm not hundred percent sure what we're making today <laughs> I know we're gonna make some earrings probably a bracelet or a necklace and then um, I'm also going to be using some tiara cast uh, antique brass findings so we have some ear wires and some clasps there um, we have some charms and spacer beads and I'm not a hundred percent sure if we're going to use this today um, some crimp crimp and cords cord ends so I also have some regular bead stringing wire off to the side and I have some beetle on Indian leather in 1.5 millimeter and it's a nice like fawn tan color and then I also have some beetle on 20 gauge uh, antique brass German style wire so we might be using all of this today um, we'll see we'll see where it goes <laughs> um, so the first thing that I want to do uh, the first thing that I've noticed actually for 2021 is a lot of layering and a lot of multi-strand pieces so I think we're gonna make um, a necklace today that can be layered like a nice layering necklace, and then we'll make a, a matching pair of earrings. Um, I'm not sure if we'll get to make a bracelet, but I really, really, really wanna make a necklace. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut apart these beautiful strands. I know we don't want to do that because it's a shame. I just love all these crystals. And then I'm just going to take them off the strand. I am going to set apart these two because I know I wanna use those in a pair of earrings later. Um, I'm going to put my crystals off to the side and then I'm just going to do the same thing with the walk on the beach set. Okay. Um, I'm almost certain I want to use either these bead caps or these bead caps in my pair of earrings. So I'm going to set one set of each of those aside. Okay, so um, I'm gonna look, at, I'm going to lay out some beads that I would like to make into a necklace. And we're gonna use several different techniques during this necklace, and it's gonna be a really nice necklace to layer. Um, so I think, I mean, this guy's stunning with the shell in it, so I think I wanna use that as the focal. And then, um, I definitely want to use these two stone beads. So I'll put these guys out here and I'm going to use some bead caps with those. So I'll put those by my bead caps. Um, I actually really, really love these octagon, are they octagon? One, two, three, nope, hexagon beads. So um, I'm gonna set these aside to make earrings out of as well. So we're gonna make two pairs of earrings today. Um, but that leaves me with these wonderful quatrefoil beads. So fun, such a great cut. So I'm gonna put those right here, right in the middle. And let's see. Um, oh, I love these little, I call them sugar beads, but I have no idea what they're actually called. They're acrylic beads with um, a texture that makes them look like they're covered in sugar to me. So I wanna use all four of these within the design. Um, I'm not sure where I'll put the other two yet. 
and um, oh, I'm seeing these two tiny antique copper spacers. I'm going to set those aside to use with some of my earrings. And then I also want to use these two pink crystals. I am going to put those on the outside of my gemstones. And I think I'm going to put the two black sugar beads right here. I do want something to transition from this larger bead down to these flatter beads. And I think we can do that really well with these two um, gray or taupe rondelles. And then I think, I think I really like how that looks. I am going to transition from the little taupe beads with uh, to the quatrefoil beads by using the other, two, well, two more of the antique copper crystal rondelles. And this is going to be multi-color, um, obviously, with the different um, metals. I'm also going to be using that antique bronze 20 gauge wire and some of the tiara cast findings that are also an antique gold or antique brass. So, uh, and then I think we'll do, we have a couple more. And we'll incorporate those. I think we'll put the antique copper ones right here between the black and the pink and then the gold between the black and the black, or the brown and the black. So we have a really pretty um, strand of beads made from those two, that beach duo. I am going to grab some Beadalon bead stringing wire. We'll string this and then I'll show you the next technique. Okay, today I'll be using the Beadalon gold um, 19 strand beading wire. And I am just going to put these onto my wire. You might want to, I have a new roll, so I'm just going to snip off just the very end of that. Okay, I'm just going to start with our black bead. And I'm just going to move on down the line. So then we have our crystal spacer, our rondelle, bead cap. Oh, see now I didn't, um, if you look at this, it's we've kind of run into a redundant issue. We don't really need the um, gold between the black because of I forgot we had the bead cap there. If you don't like something, go ahead and change it. I do that all the time. I'm just going to slide the black bead cap on there and I'm going to see what it'll look like between that black bead and the quatrefoil. And I like that a lot better. Actually, that looks perfect. So then we'll just keep moving on. Looks cute too. I love the mixed metal look this year. Um, and I've always been a huge fan of layering necklaces, so I'm glad that multi strands and layering pieces are looking like they're gonna be hot this year. <laughs> Something that I've always done anyway. So Oh, I forgot my bead caps. Okay, so we're at the end of our strand. Here is what the focal part of our necklace looks like. And it's super cute. Um, I am going to grab a um, crimp bead from my Beadalon stash here and this is a number one crimp bead to use with uh, you can use number two crimp tube or a number one crimp bead and that's always on the um, packaging for the Beadalon um, products 
and I have one little number one crimp tube hanging out in the middle of my box here. And I am going to grab a loop from our tear cast set. The other two loops I'm going to set aside because I want to use those in a pair of earrings. And then I am just going to crimp this onto our loop. So we want to make sure that our um, wires don't cross when we're starting our crimp. And I want it a little bit closer. And you can absolutely use a wire guardian here too if you'd like. But I'm going to, if you see there is a dip and peak, I'm going to put that crimp bead inside of the dip. I'm going to slide it down a little bit and crimping on camera is always stressful <laughs> and we'll just make our crimp and then I will turn it 90 degrees and crush it a little bit more and then we'll do it again keep walking it up the jaws until it flat crimps so then we have some movement on our ring I will cut this off at the end of the necklace when we're finished with everything. I am leaving this attached to the spool because I have another step before I crimp the other side. I always slide a few um, inches of the wire into my beads and that's not because I think it'll reinforce it, it's just because I think um, it'd be easier to crack this crimp off than restranding the whole necklace if I make a mistake. The good part about this is you can, if you don't have a crimp cover, this black bead is going to cover up your crimp tube or your crimp bead. It's looking great. Okay, so I've cut a length of that um, natural cord, leather cord, the 1.5 millimeter. And I've also cut a length of our 20 gauge wire in antique brass. So I'm going to go ahead and put my leather through my loop and I'm going to hold it just like that. Okay. And you can just, you can do an inch, you can do a half an inch, whatever's easiest for you. And then I am going to take and hold in the back I guess the loop, it doesn't matter because there's not a real front of or back of the necklace. I'm going to take my wire and hold it on one side of my leather and I'm going to wrap it around my leather like this and you can do this before you strand because that strand kind of gets in the way but we're just going to wrap down the leather. And you can use um, your hands, you can use your pliers, whatever is easiest for you. And I want to get it as close as I can and neat as I can, although messy wraps look really great on here too. But we're going to just wrap it around and create a connection onto the leather. Okay. And you can do as many or as few as you'd like. I'm going to do four. And then I'm going to bring it back around to the side where I started my leather. So um, it, that'll be like the back of the necklace. So I can cut off the wire on both sides, on the same side, I mean. So I'll take my snips, cut as close as I can to the wire without cutting the leather or any of the other coils. And then we'll do the same thing up here. I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit. And then we'll snip. And then we're also going to snip this extra leather tail. Okay. So here's one side of our necklace.
And I'll just hide this guy in here. And then I am going to um, crimp the other side and then I'll show you how we finish off the necklace. Um, and then you have to decide how long you'd like your necklace to be. It does not have to, um, but it could be long, it could be short, whatever works for you. Okay, I've already done my other side. So this is what it looks like if you decide to do um, the ring before you strand your necklace. And then I am just going to cut some of the beading wire and I'll grab another crimp bead and then we will crimp on to our other ring And as I've shared before, we wanna make sure our necklace is loosey-goosey. We don't want to crimp it while the necklace is like this. And the reason for that is if you try to do that, your necklace won't lay well on your, your chest or on your neck. It'll look like a straight line or it'll just be too stiff and it won't flow well. So I'm going to make sure my necklace is loosey-goosey, meaning it's just kind of like that. Make sure that there aren't too many gaps between your beads. If there are, you can, um, Make sure that you're just making it a little bit tighter. So there is a little bit of gap showing here. Just pull your string. And then we will crimp. and cut off these tails and then I'll show you how we're going to finish off our necklace make sure you only cut the um, the tail wire don't cut the main wire I mean for obvious reasons but I've done that before and I've had to restrand my entire necklace So there is our middle part of our necklace and then we will finish off the ends. Tierra Cast has these wonderful, um, I think they were called crimp, crimping cords. So they're cord ends that you can crimp without using glue. And um, so they were perfect for this 1.5 millimeter leather. I'm sure they'd be I'm almost positive they would fit two millimeter leather, but I'm not 100% sure about that. All I'm going to do is slip the end of my leather into the crimp cord end, the crimping cord end, and I'm going to squeeze. And I'm going to do that a few times just to make sure that it's grabbed in there. You can use glue. Um, this seems pretty sturdy to me and I don't feel like I need to. Uh, and you could do this with just flat pliers if you like. This is so fun. And then look, I'm, pu I'm pulling on that. I'm like really pulling on that and it's not going anywhere. So we have our necklace almost finished. And then from here, if you'd like to make your necklace adjustable, add um, a jump ring and some chain to the back so you can grab the necklace with your um, clasp wherever you'd like. Although today I'm going to use a toggle clasp to finish this necklace off. Okay, so I have these antique brass um, findings, but since we are using um, a very multicolor uh, metal look on this necklace, you can use gold, you can use silver, gunmetal, copper, whatever you'd like. But I'm just using two jump rings from there. And then I have these findings from TR Cast. And I think there are two different toggle clasps in here. So 
we'll dump this out and set the earring findings aside for a minute. We'll be coming back to those. And then I just want to, I'm definitely going to be using this set. These would be fantastic to use on a bracelet using the rest of the beads from the kit. So I'm going to grab my pliers and I'm going to twist open my jump rings. And just hook on my clasps. Those, <laughs> those crimp ends really made that easy. I need to need some more of those. <laughs> Okay, so we have one side finished. Here's this side. And our necklace is finished. This is so pretty. Let me back out so you can see the necklace. Okay, so here is the necklace, this portion. Oh my gosh, this is the perfect layering necklace, especially if you have like a nice long chain. You can make this necklace as long or as short as you'd like. Those beads, those pretty links. And I'm seeing here we need to tuck in, we need to tuck in our edge a little bit. Just to make sure we don't snag on a sweater or t-shirt or our skin. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Just tuck it in. And then um, we come up our leather here. Something you could do is you could come, you could wrap your uh, leather with more wire and some smaller beads. That would be cool. But, um, and then here's our really easy ending. No glue, no knots, no fuss. Just two jump rings and a pair of pliers. So there's our first piece. And then let's move on to the earrings. That's gonna be really fun. First thing that jumped out at me from the entire uh, strand, that first strand, um, the beach tan strand, were these little crystals. And I, if you guys follow my channel, you will know I'm obsessed with pineapples. And these really, really reminded me of pineapples. These also reminded me of pineapples. So I have to make a pair of pineapple earrings. Um, and we're going to do that really easily. We we'll just need two head pins. And I'm just using generic head pins here. And um, we have these beads. And I actually saved these gold stopper beads from the ends of those two strands. You guys, I always keep these just in case I need them for something like this. And I also set aside these two spacers. So this is almost not a tutorial because it's just so easy, but I thought it was such a cute design. So I'm going to put on one of our crystals. Doesn't matter which, there are the crystals the same all around, so it doesn't matter which side's the top or the bottom. And then I am going to slide on one of our crystal rondelles. So cute. And then I'll put on my bead cap. Now this is where you would think it wouldn't work. The bead cap is a little wide up here and it doesn't really, it kind of flops around a little bit. So if we try to make a loop, it really wouldn't work very well. But that's why I saved these little um, ender spacer beads. So if we slide that down, all of a sudden our bead cap cooperates. And look at our little pineapple. I think it's so adorable. <laughs> So um, what I'm going to do is just bend my head pin. I'll snip off the unneeded portion. And then I will create a simple loop. You can do um, a wire wrap loop if that's your prerogative, but I'm just going to do a simple loop here and I'm going to make it really make sure it's kind of tight in there so we don't have too much movement. But there's our little pineapple. And I'll do the same with our second guy. And I'll do the same with our second bead. 
and our bead, rondel bead, and our bead cap, and our spacer. Just fold, snip, and loop. Actually cut that one a little bit too long so we'll just come in there snip a little bit of our loop off we'll just re-close that loop and there we go so I have two pineapples super cute pineapples and I have these TiraCast ear wires just open that loop up slide this guy on close our loop easy peasy And we have our first pair of earrings. Cute little pineapples. Oh my gosh, so cute. I can't stand how cute they are. <laughs> okay, so there's our first pair of earrings. And then the other pair is going to be just as easy. Oh, and I need to close that earring up a little bit more. There we go. Our second pair is going to be just about as easy, but it'll be a little bit dangly. So I'm going to grab our hexagons. I'm going to grab two of our ovals. Aren't those pretty? And do I want something at the top too? I was going to just have the hexagons hang from the ovals, but we can make them super sparkly. How about we make them absolutely fantastic and use these teardrops at the top too? I think that's fantastic. So we will just make, um, well, we have a couple options. So we could wire wrap this on to our loop right here by doing a, a messy wrap. However, um, I think I'm just going to make a small, um, simple loop. I'm gonna use a jump ring to connect it, and then we'll do the same thing with the top. I just need to grab a head pin and um, antique brass. And if you don't have a head pin or an eye pin, you can use um, wire to create your charm. the first part of our earring. So pretty. And I have an eye pin.
and we'll just repeat the same thing that we did at the bottom of the earring. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And I'm not going to use a jump ring for attaching it to our ear wire. I'm just going to, like we did on the last pair, open our ear wire, slide it on, close up our ear wire, and here's our first earring. It's so sparkly and so beautiful. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And it looks really cool with our necklace. I'll show you in just a few moments everything together. So let's make our last earring. Pretty sure I cut this one a little bit too long. We'll go cut a little bit of that off. Okay, and we'll grab an eye pin. For the teardrop at the top. Make sure your edges touch when you close your jump ring. And one more piece. There we go. And I will just slip this on to another um, ear wire. We have a really elegant, fun, shiny, sparkly, gorgeous pair of earrings. There we go. Can you believe we made three pieces of jewelry? Our own little Jesse James Blitz. That's what I call them on my channel when I make a bunch of pieces of jewelry using certain items. I make jewelry blitzes. So there's the first pair, well, the second pair of earrings. Here are our little pineapples that are just this so stinking cute. I love, love, love those crystals. And our necklace. And let me scoot out so you guys can see everything. Okay, I think this is just such a fun little set and I had so much fun making it too. Um, and we used a few different techniques today. We used uh, bead stringing on to rings and we used wire wrapping with leather. And we closed those off with some cord ends. And then we made some fun, easy earrings. And these ones are kind of whimsical, I think, so. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks to Jesse James Beads for hosting me and have a good weekend. Bye-bye.